Firefox has been seeing a bit of a resurgence after Google announced that they would be killing off Manifest V2 in Chrome and Chromium-based browsers at the start of next year, which in turn is going to kill off ad blockers and a lot of other really handy extensions that people are using in their Chromium browsers every day. So I wanna help those people make that transition from a Chromium browser to a Firefox browser as painlessly as possible by showing you how to set up all of the things that you've been loving in Google Chrome within Mozilla's Firefox. So let's start with installing. You can download Firefox from mozilla.org by going to Firefox browsers and then download for desktop. And of course, it's also available in Android and iOS stores as well. But for the desktop, you go there and then download Firefox. Of course, if you're on a Linux distro, you can install it from your package manager, or you've probably got it installed on your distro already because most Linux distros are just awesome like that. Now, if you've been using Chrome for a while, chances are you've got some important sites that were bookmarked in your browser, but you can easily import those into Firefox after you've installed it by going up to the hamburger menu, clicking on bookmarks, and then clicking on manage bookmarks down at the bottom here, or you could just press control plus shift plus O to bring that dialog box up automatically. And then from here, you want to click on import and backup, and then you can import data from another browser. And you wanna just go ahead and select your browser, and then the profile that you wanna import bookmarks from if you had multiple profiles. Click next and then select all the things that you want to import. And there we go. So now you can see all of the bookmarks from my Chromium browser are here in my Firefox bookmarks bar now. And if you wanna change this, like if you don't want your bookmarks to always be showing, you can do that in the hamburger menu as well. Click on bookmarks and then hide the bookmarks toolbar. Now, one feature that is really popular in Google Chrome is the browser sync between multiple devices like your desktop and your smartphone. Uh, in fact, probably the reason why so many people are using this, at least in the Android ecosystem, is because typically when you set up an Android phone, you end up connecting a Google account to it. And I'm pretty sure when you do that, it automatically syncs up your history and everything with Google Chrome in that browser. And of course it does the same thing if you sign into your Gmail account in a uh, Google Chrome browser, which a lot of people have. So that's how most people end up getting that sync, like they don't even realize it, but you can do the same thing in Firefox. So the way that you would do that is go to the hamburger menu and then you can just click this sign in button next to sync and save data. And then it's going to bring you to this page where you can create a Firefox account. I know, sounds kind of weird, but it's not really any weirder than having a Google account. In fact, it's more private than the Google accounts because Firefox Sync is encrypted with zero knowledge encryption. So only you can see your passwords in your browsing history. So you can go ahead and put in the email address that you want to connect to it and a password, and then uh, they'll, I believe they email you a code, you know, regular account, modern account setups. And then you'll have that Firefox account. So then you can sign in to Firefox on your iOS or uh, your Android device, any of them, and then you're automatically going to get that sync between any device that has Firefox on it. Now, as far as the day-to-day -day navigation within Firefox, like most modern browsers, 90% of things are going to function the same as they do in Chromium. So you can type in here in the search URL bar and then uh, you know go to whatever website you want to go to. You can also just search for something. So that's going to just use whatever your uh, built-in search engine is. In this case, it's gonna be Google. I think that's actually the case uh, for most installations of Firefox. I think that's like part of their deal where Google gives them a bunch of money is they end up being the default search engine. But if you wanted to change it, you can of course just go to your hamburger menu and then you go to settings and then you can click on search here and then change it to be, you know, DuckDuckGo, whatever search engine you want it to be. 
And also another thing you can change from here is search suggestions. So by default, this is enabled just like it is in Chromium, I'm pretty sure in Chrome-based browsers. Uh, so basically what search suggestions is gonna do is whenever you start uh, typing something out, it's going to you know, try to auto-complete it for you, all that cool stuff. Some people don't like it. They don't you know, like their searches being sent between the um, search suggestions. So they like to turn it off. It's up to you. I mean, if you're using a Chrome browser, then chances are you like this because that's the default. So then you could just leave it alone. But hey, the setting's there if you ever want to change it. And of course, for navigating, there's a back button and a forward button. Uh, inside of Firefox, there's a refresh button inside of Firefox, or you can you know, stop the refresh halfway through and then have a broken page like this. All the same things that you would see in Chromium. Uh, there's also an incognito mode. Well, it's not called incognito mode in Firefox, it's called a private window, uh, but the way that you access it is a little bit different. So instead of, I think, Control Shift N is what it is in Chromium, it is Control Shift P and boom you get this nice private window. Now let's take a look at some more advanced browsing features like browser profiles. So those let you easily separate different browsing habits so things don't all get cluttered, you don't end up having a million bookmarks, things like that. Uh, Firefox does have the same thing, but by default, there isn't a handy little button over here that lets you easily access your profiles like you would see in a Chromium-based browser. What most Firefox users do, and what I do as well, is I just type about colon profiles, and if you are gonna be using this a whole lot, you can just bookmark this page. And then uh, if I show you my bookmarks toolbar, you can see that it's right here. So this lets you access that page really, really easily. And then from here, you could just click on, uh, you know, launch profile in new window, and then that's going to launch that different browser profile. But I know for some of you, this still isn't good enough. You want to have that handy little profile button up here that then brings up the tiny profile menus where you can click on the uh, little different avatars, just like in Chrome. So to do that, you can install Profile Switcher for Firefox. Uh, so this is in the uh, add-ons mozilla.org. And this is an extension that does just that. Uh, now, when you first install the extension, you're going to have to install some additional software for it to work, depending on what platform you're on. Like if you're on Arch Linux, there's actually an AUR package that you can install to complete this app. On Windows, you could just download the file for 64-bit systems there. And when you're done with that, you're gonna have a profiles icon. Uh, and if it doesn't show up here, the way that you can get to it is going to the hamburger menu, more tools, and then customize the toolbar. And then I have it right over here that was uh, kind of in the overflow. So I'll just move it over here. In fact, I'm get rid of this. I don't actually need the save to pocket button. I don't ever use that. Uh, and then we can close this out. And so now I've got that little profile menu right here and, and click manage profiles and it brings up a little window like this and we can customize it if we want because I know it looks really bland right now. So we'll do dark mode, of course, that's a must have. Uh, we'll apply that in all profiles. And let's see, let's, uh, let's actually get some nice little avatars going here. So how about we make new a happy little penguin? And let's see, let's change web dev to, hmm, what are we gonna use? How about an origami penguin? There we go, because you guys know I just love penguins. So yeah, it basically works the same as it does in Chrome. And you know, you could just click on them to access new profiles and there you go. So now that we've got Chrome-like profiles in Firefox, let's see if we can get Chrome-like casting working. So to do this, you're going to need another extension and some other programs that you're gonna to have to install. Um, so we'll start with the extension. I'll leave a link to this site in the description of this video because I'm pretty sure that you can't find this in the Firefox extension store. You can only get it from this site or from the 
developer's GitHub. Um, but anyway, you're gonna need this. And there's also the links to the additional software that you can download or that you need to download for the bridge. Uh, like on Linux, there's two packages that I can remember. One is NSS and one is um, like Avahi, A-V-A-H-I, something like that. Um, I think that it, there's another one that you need on Arch Linux as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's written in here. So yeah, you need Avahi on Linux. And if you're using Arch Linux, there's this additional configuration that you need to do for NSS. And this is what that looks like. So this file is um, etsy nsswitch.conf. And what you need to do is, um, actually I can delete this line. You basically need to put this that I have commented out because uh, I had it misconfigured before on this host line. So it can go after my machine, but you need to make sure it goes before resolve uh, this unavail equals return. You have this MD, MDNS minimal. I think that that's the other program you needed on Arch Linux, MDNS. They're small programs, so don't worry about bloat. I mean, if you're trying to cast from your browser to a Chromecast, there's already a lot of bloat going on. So you shouldn't be worried about it anyway. Um, but yeah, you need to have this configuration set up. And uh, after you do that, you need to restart the service. Uh, with system control restart Avahi daemon service. And um, after you do that, if you already had this installed, then you need to reinstall it. Um, it should work now that I had all that stuff done before. Uh, and this is kind of counting as a new installation, but let's see. This is a little bit of a finicky, finicky, uh, <laughs> extension, but I have gotten it to work before. So let's see if we can find something that's not like super cringe. All right, this this actually looks kind of cool. This is like something I would normally watch. Um, all right, so yeah, we've got this uh, Sony TV thing going on. Um, actually, I think this is gonna be like a voiceover, whatever. So choose this. Um, oh yeah, see, so Whenever you're going to cast from a site, you need to make sure it's whitelisted. So I'll just add this to whitelist and um, then we'll do the cast. So cast YouTube to Sony TV, click cast, click confirm. And you should be able to hear it from my TV in a second. Yeah, there you go. So that's coming from my TV. Unlike these guys, you will catch something amazing today. Incredible fish, unprecedented. So yeah, there you go. You're able to get Chrome like casting. Uh, even though this isn't something that I would really use, because typically whenever I cast something, I'm just doing it. Like it's usually something that I download because even in Chrome browsers or Chromium browsers, I just find that casting it to a 4K TV doesn't look as good as torrenting a 4K file and then you know using like VLC to um, cast it that way. But hey, if you like to cast from Chromium, now with this FX cast extension and doing the proper configurations for your operating system, you can use it just like uh, Chrome's built-in casting within Firefox. While we're talking about add-ons, of course, you can find the rest of all of your favorite add-ons at mozilla.org. And look at that, ad blockers are highlighted right here. Firefox is embracing ad blockers, which is probably the reason why you are now embracing Firefox in the first place. And if we go to the staff picks for ad blockers, this um, purple mask gentleman here, I guess that's like, I don't know, supposed to be like the um, private browser icon or whatever. He recommends uBlock Origin. Look at that. He's got a great taste in ad blockers. And if we click on this link here, it should automatically install uBlock Origin. Yep, there it is. And we'll allow it to run in private windows, of course. And bam, look at that. Now, not only do we have all of the capabilities of Chromium, you know, we've got the nice little 
uh, profile thing. We've got the nice little Chromecast thing, which also you can just cast your screen. So if you want to do that, like mirror every single site and tab, that's possible to do uh, to your TV as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and stop this. But now you've also got uBlock Origin, which is something that the Chrome users are not going to have at the beginning of next year. So now we actually have a better browser and there's all kinds of other things like again, the fact that it's made by Mozilla and not Google, a much more privacy respecting company. Uh, it's also written in Rust. I mean, I guess that's a bonus. A lot of people like that. Uh, performance eh, may vary depending on what you're using. But for me on Linux, I haven't noticed any difference between using uh, Firefox or a Chromium browser for performance. So. I would say that that makes it an all around better browser, especially better than what Chromium's gonna be next year. Now, go on, enjoy your free and open source, uh, privacy and ad block respecting browser. You can also check out the Firefox page in Mozilla's blog. So that'll give you a lot of additional information because this is just sort of a brief overview on how to transition to Firefox and get all the same things that you like in Chrome. So you can read more here, or you can go to, I think this is the right link, yeah. Uh, the subreddit, the Firefox subreddit, this has a lot of cool stuff that you'll be able to see there as well. But I hope you found this video useful. Welcome to the comfy orange Fox browser, and have a great day.